five decades ago, announcing the free speech movement. Now we stand here today announcing a new free speech movement. The Berkeley College Republicans have reached a decision that in the best interest of safety and in the best interest of all parties that we cancel our event. Unfortunately, despite giving the university four weeks to prepare, they have not provided a venue for us and UCPD has not shown any, excuse me, UCPD has not will refuse to ensure the safety of all students. They have not provided any assurance to us that they will provide safety for Ann Coulter as well. They may have won the battle, but certainly not the war. The Berkeley College Republicans and the Young Americans Foundation will continue against, uh, with their lawsuit against the university for infringing upon our right to free speech. The Berkeley College Republicans will not cower in the face of the university's obstructionism, nor will it cower to left-wing agitators that the UCPD and the administration has proven to be feckless in defending us against. Here at UC Berkeley, the Berkeley College Republicans will continue to lead the fight for free speech. Thank you. I'd like to delegate now to Troy Warden, our president. Hello, everyone. I'm here to answer any questions you might have. If I can't answer the question, I will direct our attorney, Harmeet Dillon, uh, to answer them for you. Do you see Ann Coulter's statement today as any way hypocritical? Last week she said she'd come regardless. Now she's not. Well, this isn't a matter just about Ann Coulter. This is about the safety of students on campus. And UCPD and the administration told us specifically that they cannot guarantee the safety of students on campus. So Ann Coulter and I assume all the other organizations involved, including the Berkeley College Republicans, do not want to endanger people's lives. So, again, because of the university's unwillingness to do their job, because of the unwillingness of the law enforcement's ability to do their job, we are forced to cancel the event. This is a matter of the university and, and UCPD obstructing our right to free speech. And Coulter tweeted earlier that her supporters had gone to the other side. She also made similar comments to Reuters. Can you respond to that? You know, this is not about um, any of the organizers. This is about the university and their unwillingness to really ensure that conservatives also have a platform and a place to express themselves at UC Berkeley. It's a shame that violent anarchists and other groups that are allowed on campus freely are able to make threats against our event and force us to cancel because of the it can, out of concern for the safety of everyone involved. Will the lawsuit go forward? Yeah, the lawsuit. Address the lawsuit. The lawsuit is going forward. The lawsuit is not about Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter was simply the catalyst and the straw that broke the camel's back on free speech here at UC Berkeley. We are seeking an injunction to prevent the University of California, Berkeley, from applying unequal rules and unequitable access to its facilities here, which is its stated policy, and that's all laid out in our lawsuit. So the next steps here are going to be that the two plaintiffs in this lawsuit who are united in pursuing this are going to go to the court, and we're going to go through the normal steps of a lawsuit here in federal court. It could last for months. It could last for over a year. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to further steps beyond the district court. But this is a long game that we're playing. We are seeking to ensure that future generations of UC Berkeley students are able to enjoy equal access, whether they're conservative, liberal, or whatever their perspective is, and that similarly, Young America's Foundation, which seeks to promote this principle on campuses all over the country, is able to apply that ruling to other campuses around the country. The excuse used by UC Berkeley to suppress the speech here in this case is one manufactured by the university's inaction, compounded by the city of Berkeley's police department inaction and refusal to honor its obligation to the taxpayers to ensure equal access to taxpayer-funded facilities here at UC Berkeley. This morning, Chancellor Dirk sent out an email to the entire campus stating that they offered an alternative date for the event and then offered to continue to work with the group to find another date for the event and that you refused to work with them to find another date. Uh, is there nothing there that they, they tried their best to find a date that would work with you? They, Chancellor Dirks claimed that you picked a date unilaterally without consulting the school and that was the main reason for this? That he did not cancel the event? The school did not cancel the event? Yes. Yeah, so propaganda is the repetition of lies and the statement in question is propaganda. The, uh, 
Second line is laid out carefully in our complaint, and you will see a new letter that I sent to the counsel for UC Berkeley just moments ago posted on my law firm's website. It is entirely hypocritical for the university to now claim that it invites Ann Coulter to speak here while out of the other side of its mouth, the university and its counsel are saying that it cannot ensure safety. Uh, nobody in their right mind would agree to those conditions where they say, Ann Coulter, uh, UC Berkeley Republicans, please have your event here on Sprawl Plaza. That's absurd. The university students are suing for the right to have equal access to university taxpayer funded facilities. The same facilities that have been made available to uh, as, uh, as offensive speakers as Iranian President Ahmadinejad and important speakers as well as numerous uh, presidential candidates in the last election cycle, Bernie Sanders, Supreme Court justices, and other people who are of controversial nature. Is the university telling us that it's, allow, it's able to ensure safety and security at football games that have thousands of people at them, including drunk people and uh, prominent people like this, yet when it comes to conservative speakers, it's not able to fulfill its sworn peace officer duty to provide safety and security? Those are not the requirements of the Constitution. The Constitution requires that University of California Berkeley not allow hecklers and anarchists and liberal fascists to quell the speech of conservatives on college campuses. And the same rules apply to liberals on college campuses. No student at UC Berkeley or any taxpayer-funded institution should have to suppress their speech because of critics and because the university fails to do its job. The university says that it has a legal obligation in the same vein to say, we know this would be an unsafe event. So does free speech trump safety? Aren't they also obligated to make sure students are safe if they know there's a threat? Why are they inviting Ann Coulter to come speak here today at the last minute then, at Sproul Plaza rather than in uh, a closed environment? That's hypocritical. Actually, if you read my letter, which I just referred, rather than making things up, you would see that, in fact, council did invite Ann Coulter to come speak here today. The, I think the words are, of course, we welcome her to come speak here today at Sproul Plaza. So that is what council said to me, and I've responded to that in my letter. But that's so, my first question. question. Is it also the university's responsibility to, if they know there's a threat, say that's not a good idea to students? Isn't that I have important answered or more that. important? I have answered that. There is case law regarding the heckler's veto. You can look that up. The case law says that threats of violence in the generalized sense that the university has described, namely their internet research, weeks of research, that is not sufficient. It has to be an ongoing riot here that would cause the university to call off an event. So three, the standard, the standard is well articulated in the case law. Would Berkeley College Republicans like to invite Ann Coulter to speak here on campus in a safe venue or a protected venue at a later date? And is there anything to suggest that she would accept that invitation at this point? Ann Coulter and any other conservative speaker is welcome on this campus. The Berkeley College Republicans will continue to invite conservative speakers to this campus in an effort to secure the mantle of the home of the free speech movement. We have to take up the, the, the fight for free speech. The university has shown itself that it's unwilling to do so. Uh, if Ann Coulter is willing to, to come to UC Berkeley, the invitation is open. That goes for anyone else. But what about her statement that she felt like she lacked the support of her allies? Again, the university and UCPD have made it impossible for the Berkeley College Republicans and other groups involved to safely host Miss Coulter on campus. We have not been provided a venue, and unfortunately, we also haven't been allowed to schedule these events at times we would like. So, in light of all these restrictions, yes, the university and UCPD are at fault for what has occurred. And it's unfortunate that we have ha had to cancel the event out of concern for safety for students. As recently as yesterday, as recently as yesterday, I engaged in a multi-hour dialogue with counsel for UC Berkeley to attempt to reach a compromise here. Ben, stand down. Talk about stand down. Time, but the fact of the matter is, it is not acceptable under the law to relegate Ms. Coulter to a lesser place, time, or manner of speaking than other speakers are allowed to speak at UC Berkeley. 
four weeks of specific notice of a date is more than what was afforded for other speakers who spoke on the campus last week. So it is not appropriate for Berkeley to pick and choose that we're going to let that speaker speak because we like that speaker, and we're not going to let that speaker speak, or we're going to make that speaker speak off campus in an obscure hour when students are in classes, unable to attend. That is not permitted by the First Amendment. Troy, I want to give you a chance to respond to Renawi, to respond to something that Bridge USA said earlier today, which was that they were one of the groups that had invited Miss Culture. They invited three different speakers with different political viewpoints to talk here. And Bridge USA is now saying that they felt they were more interested in an open dialogue and that Berkeley College Republicans, in their opinion, are more interested in provocation. Can you respond to that? This isn't an issue about uh, an open dialogue of free speech. This is an, an, an issue about about just an open dialogue or, for instance, um, having someone come here and, and, and meet the requirements. This is about free speech. So the fact that we couldn't even get a speaker on campus, that's our primary concern. This isn't just an issue about a dialogue. And moreover, Bridge Cal or Bridge USA, they're not part of the, the current lawsuit against the university. And we were in talks directly with Ms. Coulter and the Young America's Foundation to make this happen. So the reason why this event was canceled was because of the obstructionism of the university and UCPD. Who extended the initial invitation to Ann Coulter? The initial invitation to Ann Coulter was orchestrated with the Berkeley College Republicans by Bridge USA. Have you been in touch with Ms. Coulter directly since yesterday? I have not been in touch with Ms. Coulter directly, but Harmeet and the Wheat have. What, what, is what, is, what, is she, what does she say? Well, I think Ms. Coulter, so to be clear, everybody has their job to do. She prepared a speech to deliver here tomorrow, and she wanted very much to deliver that speech. She's disappointed that she can't deliver it. And, uh, you know, she's not here because of the actions of the university. I think she's frustrated by that. And she's a longtime speaker who's spoken on multiple campuses. She's been a longtime supporter of student groups. And so I know she's frustrated. I'm frustrated as a lawyer. But a lawsuit is a long-term remedy that's going to affect not just Ann Coulter's speech, but other speakers here at UC Berkeley and other speakers across the country. So that's the strategy that the two plaintiffs in this lawsuit have chosen to pursue. We're not backing away from the goal. To the contrary, the goal is much larger than Ann Coulter's speech here tomorrow. Ann Coulter is just one of many speakers who's been denied their equal access here at UC Berkeley. Would you not the money say there's a contradiction the between contract? your desire to cancel the event because of danger versus your statement that there wasn't enough danger to legally cancel the event on the school side, which they claim they didn't cancel the event? So they have canceled the event. The lawsuit describes it, and we've attached exhibits showing that the university refused to provide a forum. And if you look at my letter today, you'll see yet again, yesterday, after many hours of dialogue, ca campus council refused to accommodate our reasonable time, place, and matter requirements that are set forth in our positions. So uh, the, the conditions of danger have been created by UC Berkeley and the City of Berkeley Police Department refusal to obey the law, refusal to enforce the law. The law, for example, does not allow masked Antifa protesters to go around and intimidate people out of ex exercising their free speech rights. Yet every citizen watching the video streams and the TV in America saw uh, in the February riot here that the campus police and the, co and the city police uh, didn't lift a finger to prevent that violence from occurring. And that is the subject of separate civil rights violations that people are pursuing and looking at right now. Our lawsuit is narrowly limited to ensuring access to free speech on a public institution campus. And that's the goal we're going to pursue. We're very excited about pursuing it. And we think it's very important. And it's way beyond just one speech or one speaker. Do you know why Ann Coulter, though, included the lack of support among allies as one of the reasons why she wasn't coming? Well, I think Ann wanted some specific things done in the lawsuit, but she's not a client of my firm, and she's not one of the two people who's going to be in the long haul for this case. You have a speaker. Her job is speaking. Her, she's a, she's a polemicist, uh, self-described, and she's also somebody who talks on TV quite a bit. That's a 30-minute, 30 30-second, 30 60-second, two-minute soundbite or a one-hour speech and you go. The goal of a lawsuit and the goal of institutional reform here at UC Berkeley uh, through the courts is a very much longer-term goal. And not everybody has, I guess, the, that patience or long-term view. And so uh, Anne is an old friend of mine. I've known her for over 25 years. I'm disappointed that she feels this way, but I'm confident that as time goes on and we ultimately vindicate the principle of equal access and free speech.
at UC Berkeley. She and other conservative commentators and other people across the political spectrum, indeed, will be happy to see this. In fact, regardless of Anne coming here to speak or not, I have received uh, emails and calls of support from left-wing lawyers, centrist, political commentators around the country. People who say in the beginning of their sentence, I despise what Ann Coulter has to say. I don't like Ann Coulter. I don't like Donald Trump. But I love what you're doing because the principle is equally applicable to all people from all political viewpoints on campus. John, I want to ask you, given, given the situation, do you think this, that her pulling out is the best answer right now for all involved? Well, the best answer for all involved is, again, to have free speech, but also to have that free speech protected. If we can't have Aunt Ms. Coulter speak here uh, without being able to guarantee the safety of the attendees, then that is a move that we cannot take. In effect, our free speech has been stifled because the university has not decided has decided not to assist us in uh, making sure the event can occur successfully. So we aren't going to have an unsuccessful event. We aren't going to have a dangerous event. We're going to have an event where our free speech, our conservative speech, can be heard just as, for instance, the former president of Mexico, Vicente Fox, could be heard just last week on the 19th. So again, if the university can take it upon themselves to ensure that our speakers are treated equally, just as liberal speakers are treated and former heads of states are treated, then we will consider um, making sure the event goes through. But if it can't be successful, we don't see a reason to host it. And why is it important to you to continue inviting conservative speakers to campus? We don't want to set a precedent where the university can collaborate indirectly with anti-fascist groups and shut down our events. The longer-term goal here, as Harmeet said, was institutional reform. If we aren't able to engender a longer-term change at the university, then we will be unable to actually meet our goal. We want to be the new free speech movement on campus. It's quite apparent that the university, many of the students here, and the anarchists that roam the streets of Berkeley are uninterested in upholding the free speech movement. Yeah, can I, can I add that on behalf of Young America's Foundation, yesterday when I had the dialogue with the counsel for the university about her speaking here today, and they ended the dialogue by saying, we're not going to give you a room like we would give any other uh, college group, but she's welcome to come speak in Sproul Plaza, you know, have her thing out here in the open. After telling us that out here in the open is an uncontrollable environment that's subject to potentially criminal attacks. Young America's Foundation, in conjunction with the Berkeley College Republicans, wanted to have an event in a classroom setting. This was a classroom setting designed by the BridgeCal invitee, where they were going to have a question and answer, chairs, microphones, and a controlled environment. It's not a successful substitute to say to Ms. Coulter or the groups that brought her here, why don't you go into a public forum and speak in the open with rude hecklers like we're encountering here now in this press conference disrupting your speech. That is not what the First Amendment requires. The First Amendment requires equal access, not one level of open access for conservatives out in the open with attackers shouting us down, and another level of access in a private, closed setting where people are allowed to enjoy an educational opportunity without interruption, like we're experiencing right here. But the university offered an alternative, May 2nd. They said another time. Do you, are you sympathetic with the university's problem here that equality might not mean sameness? They might need to treat different speakers differently. They can't under the Constitution, not in this country. In some other country, maybe you can do that. In this country, that is not permitted saying to the speaker, why don't you come when nobody's in class and nobody's around to hear you, is absurd. And I'm sure the court is going to reject that. That is not a substitute. And moreover, I will add, at no point did the university say we're going to give you a specific room. So first of all, they said, can you speak when nobody's around between one and three in a securable location? We happen to know from prior experience that a securable location to them means a location off campus, like shuttle distance away from campus, not in the center of campus, and also unadvertised. That's another condition that the university put on prior events by the Berkeley College Republicans. They have not, to our knowledge, imposed that don't advertise your event to other student groups. To be clear, these two groups, these two groups are not interested in speaking in an echo chamber to other people who share their views. That's not educational. Educational is inviting and having people who might be interested in different viewpoints enjoy that speech. It defeats the purpose the university says, we're going to let you have your event, but if you advertise it, we're going to charge you more. That's what was said to us. 
and we're not going to let you have other people there. That's, that defeats the purpose. We can all see lectures on YouTube. We can all see lectures that we enjoy in our social media. What we get in a university setting where we have diverse views uh, here uh, represented is dialogue. It's different views. And I want to add that BridgeCal was having a speaker series. The first speaker of that speaker series was allowed to speak without incident during evening hours in a central location. The second speaker of that series is Ann Coulter. Both of those speakers were communicated to the university administration around the same time. The timeline of that is set forth in a sworn uh, verified complaint in the courts. You've all had access to that. And nobody in any communication from the university has contradicted that timeline other than to repeat the lie that we only found out about it from the media. The documents that we've set forth and submitted to the court demonstrate that's not true. Actually, that's not true. The university, actually, call it, BCR admitted last week to the press that YAF leaked this before they got to confirm with the university. They sent an email to the university after YAF leaked this. So they did what do you mean that. leak this? That's not true. That there, is true. there is an. That last are you week. are you a polemicist or are you a reporter? I there is a verified complaint. There is a verified. There is a verified complaint that email. sets forth the documents that sets forth the trail. And even before the date was suggested, the time range was suggested by BridgeCal. They said six weeks before the event that's supposed to take place tomorrow that Ann Coulter may come to speak in that week. So gave them a heads up, and then the process went forward from there. And that so, email was sent after the article no, in the paper. No, six was weeks. Do, six do you weeks. think Ann Coulter was the right choice as an educational tool at Berkeley? Does she rise the level to rise to Berkeley's intellectual level? Absolutely. I have complete faith in the intelligence of our students here to determine what in Ann Coulter's speeches are fact and what are arguments and what is uh, merely uh, polemics. If the university's professors are doing their job, they would teach their students to distinguish between entertainment and rational argument. I think Ann Coulter offers a mix of both. She's certainly an entertainer, she's certainly a polemicist, but she also presents arguments concerning illegal immigration and things of that nature. And to suggest that students aren't smart enough at UC Berkeley to be able to tell when Ann Coulter is making a facetious, a facetious comment or a serious comment, I think denigrates the, the students here. I think that we should hold the students at UC Berkeley to a higher standard, a standard worthy of the home of the free speech movement. Ann Coulter and Milo Yiannopoulos have both been called provocateurs. Are you? Some people have said you are inviting provo provocateurs to elicit a response. Is there any truth to that? We, the kind of response the Berkeley College Republicans want to elicit from the university and the Berkeley community is one of engagement. We want them to actually engage with conservative ideas just as they engage with liberal ideas every day of the week. So the fact that we cannot invite a conservative speaker who ruffles some feathers and gets people to show up, the fact that we can't invite a popular conservative speaker, just goes to show that UC Berkeley and these anarchists that are roaming the streets punching people, attacking my friends, it just goes to show that they are interested in really hearing uh, our ideas and engaging in a free exchange of ideas at a university that is world-renowned and quite frankly, one of the, the, the epitome of public education. Uh, Anne feels like uh, certain things should have been filed or done in court, and, you know, she's not a party to this case, so she's our right to her opinions, but it is UC Berkeley that canceled the speech. It canceled the speech effectively by engaging in a dialogue with the student group saying, okay, these are some rooms that are available. That dialogue occurred between the university and the students until recently, and then when that happened, uh, event, th there was a volt fast, there was a about face by the university, which then said, you know what? Forget those rooms that we suggested to you were available. We're not going to make any rooms available at all. And then they came back and imposed some narrow restrictions. So there's a long back and forth between the parties. I know Anne is disappointed. I'm sorry about that. And I hope that after the court orders UC Berkeley to provide equal access to its facilities, that she's able to come back here and speak. And frankly, other conservative speakers are able to come back here and so speak. they didn't order you not to seek a temporary court order? I'm sorry? YF did not order you not to seek a temporary court order. Well, there were a number of options before the parties, and, you know, that was one of the options. But there was a decision made by all the attorneys, and uh, there are multiple attorneys involved in this case on our side of the table, and our clients as to what to do. 
Among the factors in determining what to do here is the university's refusal to ensure the security of people attending. So we are time for one more question. Do you feel that the college Republicans are being used by these outside figures to wage a battle for free speech on this campus? Milo Yiannopoulos, Ann Coulter, these are people who, I don't know, do you feel like you're being taken advantage of at all? Do you, Absolutely what, not, because what is at stake is the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. The real people who are taking advantage of all this controversy are these far left, um, leftist funded groups that are allowed to go onto campus and regularly table and speak to students. So if anyone here is, is causing provocation, is using the Berkeley College Republicans for their own purposes and to fundraise, it's these far left anarchist thugs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Tom. Can we get the spelling in both of your names? We need uh, her name as well. Uh, Tom, I, need you. I can give it to you.